All right, so we're all tired and ready to go home. And so it's time to do the most intensive part of this process and, and build a roadmap. Go, no. Um, so really there are a few things I wanted to say before we get started on this. The first being that the summit road mapping, I think used to be the most critical part of the annual viewfind planning process because it was the only time we talked about what we were doing and where we were going. And it's gotten a little more relaxed over the last few years because the community call has become a much bigger part of the process. So really we're road mapping while we're driving instead of you know, making the directions on a piece of paper and then driving for a year. So uh, if you have not, uh, previously participated, I encourage all of you, if you're interested, to join our uh, monthly community calls at least once in a while to see what we're doing and have an opportunity to provide some input. It's generally um, the first Tuesday of the month, like today is, at uh, 3 p.m. local time here, 9 a.m. Eastern, where uh, Chris and I are. So it, it's fairly uh, accessible, and I know we have some regulars in the room, but there are more people in the room than our usually on the call. So there's room for more. Um, but anyway, usually on the community call, a big part of that is going through all of the work that's currently in motion and making sure that the right people know what the next steps are and then making decisions about what to work on next. So we could certainly have a robust and broad conversation about big picture items and that kind of thing, I'm happy to have that conversation. And that is what this document uh, up on the screen right now is for. Um, Chris set it up, thank you, Chris. And he's going to be listening and taking notes into the document as we go. Uh, this is a place where we can capture uh, perceived needs, uh, things you'd like to contribute, just priorities, what's most important to you. Um, and anyone is welcome to edit the document, add your things, it's a Google Doc, so it's easy to do that. Um, I'm also happy to directly talk to anyone in the audience about any issues. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, I tend to just be in the weeds of keeping the project working. Uh, so I'm, I'm all about dependencies and things, but nobody wants to talk about that. But uh, I'm also open to ideas and input. Um, you know, as I said, this our local rising need is is dealing with infro panels and uh, utilizing linked data. So I'd love to talk more about implementing that. But if nobody feels like having that conversation and you just want this to be safe and boring, there is a safe and boring uh, in the weeds task that does need to be done. Uh, and today would be a great time to do it which is going through all the open pull requests and JIRA tickets that are tagged for release 10.1, which is coming out in just over a month from today and deciding which ones we're actually going to do and which ones we need to move to release 11. Um, and I think some of those pull requests might belong to people in this room, so we could talk about where they stand. Um, but that's not very exciting. So I don't want to inflict that on you, but that's either my threat or promise of what is going to happen if nobody talks to me. So um, are there any pressing issues that people want to uh, get onto the roadmap or should I just start boring you with JIRA tickets? Here they come. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chris. You've thought of everything. All right. So actually, there is one other small thing to talk about, which is release 10.0.1. We've actually accumulated quite a lot of bug fixes to 10.0 since we released it, but none of them have felt so earth shattering or frightening that it was urgent to release a patch release. So we've just been accumulating lots and lots and lots of really small, trivial, but useful fixes. Uh, that needs to get released at some point. And I don't think we wanna release it after we've released 10.1. So that's probably going to come out in the next couple of weeks. Um, so there is this one open ticket uh, that Ari and I have been talking about and just not getting to. 
um, 35.57 to fix a sort of obscure but real and annoying uh, bug in combined search that occurs under certain limited circumstances. Um, do we want to try to do that quickly or should we just say it's 10.1 and be done with it? Uh, and Ari's in the room so he can he can wave at me or, or he looks pained. <laughs> For those of you online, he can't see it. We do want to do it. Yes. I, I want to do it too. Yeah. It's just a question of whether we're going to do it yeah, in the next two weeks or in the next month. <laughs> it's always next two weeks. <laughs> it's yeah, that's true. It's it's been since January. It's terrible. It's been there like months waiting for the right moment. And it never comes. Right. So and it's not the top priority bug, but it needs it need it needs to get fixed. So I'll get to it real soon now. All right. Well let's let's see how we all feel when we get home after this conference and how many days of catching up on emails it takes before we can do any development work. But I'd say by the end of next week, let's make a decision of whether it's going to happen or if we need to defer it, because I think I should probably release 10.0.1 toward the middle of the month so I have a gap between making releases to get everything handled. Makes sense to me. All right. Riveting entertainment for a room full of people. <laughs> Thank you all. So um, let's see, I am actually going to log in so I can edit this page. And I should spell my name right. Wait, oh, this is not the keyboard that I have been trained to type with. <laughs> okay. There may be some interesting typos in this document. Um, let's see. We'll try <laughs> before 10.0.1, but defer as needed. All right. So then that gets us into the real 10.1 stuff. Uh, we have a handful of uh, things in the new features front, uh, starting with 1230, which is an authentication plugin implementing OpenID Connect, uh, which has been in motion for a long time. Uh, and it has now fallen behind some recent refactoring and needs to be brought up to date. Uh, I've offered to help, but my offer of help has not been taken up yet. Uh, I get the feeling this one isn't going to uh, get done in time and is going to get bumped to 11.0 unless somebody really needs this or wants this or wants to run with it. Um, ooh, that was an interesting one. That's not the colon I'm looking for. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Um, no one has screamed. So this is going to, ooh. <laughs> That's not where the shift key is. Okay. <laughs> Defer to 11. Then we have the WorldCat Search version two API. This is non-negotiable. This has to go into 10.1 and I believe that it is finished. I just need somebody to review it uh, because I can't merge it if it doesn't have a positive review. So. Do we have any WorldCat users in the room who are interested in testing this integration and or reviewing my code? Uh, if not, I, I might just have to recruit Chris or, or some other local victim who, who has the capabilities of testing it. Uh, and then finally, we have the notifications CMS functionality. This adds the ability to uh, go into a backend area under admin and put messages in that then get displayed to your users to announce things like closures or special policies. Um, and I think this is great, but I also think 
it needs a lot more work before it's ready to merge because once again, uh, it's fallen a bit behind. It needs to be updated to match the database refactoring. Uh, I don't anticipate this happening before 11.0 comes out because it feels to me like more than a month's worth of work. I'd be happy to be proven wrong, but... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, the word card uh, review, I think we're still in the boat with you. So uh, um, the word cut word cat sorry the word cat api review so we would probably do that uh, on our behalf right uh, pascal you are yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so sorry to interrupt you we already jumped this uh, point yeah but okay perfect thank you all right so i'm going to put this one as for now defer to 11.0 just to get down the scope of what's actually going to happen. And then uh, we have this ILS driver related one. This is uh, this one's been around for quite a while. This is Dia make accepted service list configurable. There's been considerable discussion, but then there are long pauses and I don't know anything about Dia and don't have access to any Dia based systems. So I am not in a position to have an opinion. Um, so all I can do is say, does anyone have anything to say about this? So does anyone have anything to say about this? I am happy to uh, bump it down the road to 11.0. Um, but I also would love to know if, if its relevance has run out or if um, parts of it perhaps could be used while others might need more maturity. So if anyone with, with interest in Dia could take a look at this and comment, that would be very helpful. All right, 1680. I'm gonna put Chris on the spot now. This is, this is another pull request that just never seems to end. We, we thought it would be easy. We'll just put a message on the screen saying, you have successfully logged in after you successfully log in. It turns out that's surprisingly complicated because of some of the less linear workflows that can occur and the certain inconsistencies in how we display flash messages in different contexts. Uh, I think we've got this nearly pinned down, but last I heard there were still uh, a handful of edge cases that were causing problems. And that is still where it lies. So the question is, do we expect that it will happen in the coming month or do we give in and push it to 11? And you can give me a thumbs up for maybe in the coming month or a thumbs down for, okay. I'm still searching for a way to fix that one that will require a full refactor. So, Hello. <laughs> um, I did pin down the initial issue, but then another moth or butterfly issue took off after that. And that one might require a full refactor. I'm hoping that there's a bolt of lightning divine inspiration that reveals the answer to me, but I don't predict any uh, storm fronts coming through in the next month. <laughs> Fair enough. I will defer, but I also am happy to pair with you on this if you just need an extra set of eyes to... Uh... Look for the lightning. <laughs> um, then we have uh, 2688, which is an accessibility related PR about simply announcing the number of search results in the title tag of the page, which I think is somewhat controversial. And the original contributor has not been responsive for some time. So I think this really needs somebody to uh, pick it up and run with it if it's going to happen. Uh, I believe that Maccabee had thoughts and was maybe going to look at it. I don't know if he is here on the stream or not. Um, but again, I'm, I'm happy to just put defer on everything uh, if, if we don't have uh, immediate activity on the radar. So I will. Okay. Defer, defer away. <laughs> okay. 
I will just defer it. We can always merge things early if they get done, but I'd like the roadmap to reflect what's likely to actually happen. All right, so 2999, this is get unique HTML element ID from record view helper. This is just a, a way of better associating labels and things together by ensuring that every record has a unique ID. Um, it's been not moving for a while. I can't remember, does, does anybody in here own this one? Now, that means I'm a bad one. I already have a bad conscience. I would take it and try. What's the deadline? One month or? Uh, more or less. I, I'd say two to three weeks would be ideal because the last week will be preparing the release. But uh... Uh, OK, I guess uh, the problem was with where is uh, since this uh, multi pane, uh, multi view uh, search, there could be um, multiple IDs on, on, uh, on, on a page and uh, therefore, uh, we have to um, discover uh, a better solution. But right. I, I, I try it. All right. If I can help, just let me know. Thanks. Then we have uh, 3279 small enhancements to the default record class. Uh, this one, I know who this belongs to. This is uh, yours, David. And I know that you haven't had... Uh, time to work on it for a while. The question is, should we defer it to 11 or uh, should we, is there an end in sight? Should we break it into smaller parts, et cetera? <laughs> huh. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot about uh, Pull request 3279, should we defer that to release 11 or do you anticipate we can finish it up in the next? Okay, what, what, what the pull request was? Oh, that, let's bring it up and look at it. I think it was not huge, but it had some review question or something that prevented it from being merged immediately. Oh yes, now I remember. Um... Um, this is still open. No, we don't have to push this to 11. We, I will fix. You will fix? It just um, fell down. All right, thank you. All right, uh, 3546 is improve accessibility of cover images. Um, this one got complicated because of the way embedded records in the search results worked when you turned on the record embedding with tabs and accordions in the search results instead of linking out to the record page. Um, Ere suggested that we could solve that problem by just changing the way linking works in that context, adding a separate link to access the record page and not relying on the cover thumbnail as the only source of uh, access to that page. So we did that through a separate pull request, number 3868. Um, and so now all that needs to happen is we resolve some conflicts and simplify what's here. Um, somebody just has to do that. And that somebody might be me. Um, I don't know if anyone else is interested in this one. Um, if Hi. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I was the one who opened that pull request, so maybe we can just quickly talk about it. I don't remember all the details, but maybe after this, I'm not sure. Sure, sure. Great. I'm happy to discuss. All right. And then we have uh, 3552, set unique labels for checkboxes, which has a dependency on 2999. So we'll see how quickly that gets done and then we'll either defer or move this forward appropriately. 3761 um, facets allow for multiple selections to be made before reloading the page. This one was alluded to as a need in one of the presentations today, which is why I mentioned it in the chat. But the idea is that right now when you're applying facets, every time you click on one, the whole page reloads before you can click on the next one. And this one gives you a checkbox that says select multiple facet values. Then you can select several facets and hit submit and they all get applied at once. Um, 
which is not only more convenient in certain scenarios, it also allows a better experience for some of the APIs that don't handle facets very well and give you strange results once you've applied some. Uh, I believe this one is almost done. There was a review which led to a refactoring. The refactoring occurred while, uh, while the conferencing was happening, so it hasn't been re-reviewed yet, but I am pretty optimistic that it will get reviewed and merged and be done in time. Uh, so I'm really just talking about this here because I think some people in the room will care about this one. It's something to look forward to. Uh, then we have uh, 3836, show count of saved items in account menu. This came out of a conversation about the fact that right now in the user account menu, um, you get numerical feedback about many of the columns, like what are your total fines? How many items do you have uh, placed on hold, et cetera. Uh, but then there's just saved items with no information. And it might be useful to have a count of how many things you've put on your favorites list. This implements that currently in a really inefficient way as a proof of concept. Uh, so I am looking for feedback on this if anyone cares. Um, if nobody cares, it will probably get deferred, but uh, that's my advertisement. And then finally, uh, 3877 in this category is uh, going to get moved down to the next category because it doesn't really belong here. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Ooh, where's the control key? <laughs> there we go. I've got it. Um, this is just some minor bugs to the OverDrive integration. Uh, I suspect nobody here uses OverDrive. Wave at me if I'm wrong. Um, so I'll, I'll wait for feedback from other quarters. Um, and then our last open pull request is 3960, fix bulk favorites saved from search results. I don't even remember what, what this is. It's recent. Uh, I suspect it's in review. Uh, let me take a look at that. And while I take a look at the, Chris, has anything magical appeared in the Google Doc that, uh... okay. Well, that's good, that's good. Um... Okay. This was in review, it needs me to review it again. So I will do that. So that's all the pull requests. And I think uh, since nobody has been screaming objections at me, we're in a pretty good position to uh, move many of the more challenging things to the 11.0 milestone, but there are still a few more things that we can realistically achieve. Uh, then that also brings us to all these JIRA tickets which are uh, more likely to need to get bumped as well. So let's see again if any of these are really important to anyone or if anyone has resources to help with them. Uh, one is an accessible local CAPTCHA option. So Viewfind has a pluggable system with CAPTCHA, um, but it would be really nice to have a CAPTCHA that can run locally but also be accessible, uh, you know, not rely purely on solving an image. Um, I also know that CAPTCHA is not very effective, so I don't know <laughs> how much this matters as we get deeper into a world of these things all being broken. But uh, nonetheless, I think it would be a nice option to offer if we had a way to do it. Um, but as far as I know, uh, we don't have a current plan on that front. Um, so I'm going to, again, stumble over this keyboard and try to type defer to 11. Uh, and if anybody feels I shouldn't, just tell me before I finish typing. Oh, I finished typing. <laughs> um, next up is 1643, uh, configurable brute force password protection. Um, I think many people use viewfind with a third party authentication system but if you don't and you use the built-in database there is the possibility that brute force attacks could be launched against it because it doesn't uh 
limit the number of attempts or anything like that. So I think it would be useful to have some kind of a system to mitigate that problem. Um, we had some discussions about the rate limiter because it seems like some of that infrastructure might be able to be leveraged to help with this problem. Um, but that's as far as we've gotten. Um, so again, I think for a somewhat complex feature that hasn't had any implementation work started yet, uh, completely maturing that in time for the release seems unrealistic. So I'm going to put that on the defer to 11 uh, list. And then uh, we also have 1652 add database support for storing session specific data. The idea here is that uh, sometimes we want to store fairly large objects in the session, but it might be nice to instead be able to put those somewhere else associated with the session ID, but not actually in the serialized session data so that it could be retrieved conditionally instead of unserialized on every single request. Um, and I think that was uh, Array's proposal. So that's an 11. I, we will defer that to 11. And I, I don't know that this, this makes us look very good, just pushing all this stuff down the road, but think of all the things I told you that we've already done. It's not quite as bad as it looks. Uh, all right, some smaller fixes and improvements. Um, there are a handful of ILS-related things. Um, there was this request to add pagination and sorting support to get my transactions in the folio driver. Do we have any folio people who care about paginated transactions? This might be one I could work on theoretically. Uh, maybe I'll leave it here just in case I find time for it. Um, oh, there's an enthusiastic yes. Oh, yes, yes. So that's an enthusiastic yes from Nicole Trujillo. Thank you, Nicole. I'm always so, sharing your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> that will, I will redouble my efforts to find a little time to work on this. I haven't assigned myself any major tasks yet. So, uh, the hardest thing is typing colons and exclamation points. Uh, Damien will try to <laughs> get to this. All right, 1664, improve consistency of numbering in results lists in search and account areas. So right now, uh, Viewfind has various lists of things. We have favorites lists, we have checked out lists, we have results lists. Some of them are numbered, some of them are not. It might be nice for everything to be more uniform. That is what this ticket is about. It's probably a relatively small template thing to sort out. Um, but also not vital to the survival of the project, I would say. Um, anybody want this? <laughs> All right, it will probably get deferred, but it might be one I could uh, approach if I have time. Um, 1679, fix layout of results per page in narrow widths and on mobile devices. I think this one might be assigned to you, Chris. Um, does this ring any bells? I think the issue is that at certain screen sizes, the, uh, the label on the result list size uh, gets wrapped in a silly way and doesn't fit the space efficiently. I'm more than happy to look into it if it's not already my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I may be falsely accusing you, but in any case, it seems like the sort of thing you might be able to do in half an hour with some CSS. So maybe take a look and see if it is. And yeah, no, I'll, I'll take care. It does. It does sound like something I've already done for our particular local website a few times. <laughs> All right. I will put your name on it. I will try to put your name on it. Um, all right. Uh, 
If you find 1698 is another folio feature specific to the Poppy release. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what this is all about. I'm not going to volunteer for it, but <laughs> if anybody wants to help, uh, take a look at this. Otherwise it will likely get deferred. Uh, then we have 1704. This is a larger one. Um, Peter Murray from Index Data shared with us, with permission, uh, an accessibility report from the University of Colorado, uh, which has various observations about viewfind. I suspect that many of these observations have already been addressed because this review took place at around the same time as another review that we've already extensively addressed. But I'm sure there are also some things here that don't overlap, so it needs some analysis. Um, so this is one that I'm sure is not going to get fully addressed in time for 11, uh, but it would at least be a good idea to look at it and see if there are any quick wins and file tickets for specific things that take more effort. Um, so again, I don't know if anybody has already started to look at this or is interested. Um, maybe this would even be something that we could have a small scale meeting about with interested parties to go through and discuss <laughs> if there's enough interested parties. Maccabee is interested to help out, but probably not in time for 10.1, which I agree with. I was thinking about this report and the other report, if we can't share them directly, um, at least sharing some of the, uh, the tasks that came out of that on the upcoming accessibility page where we wanted to put the other report that we're still working on. So we can show transparently both what we've done recently, what we're planning on do next, and what our overall grade is uh, as far as accessibility goes. Yeah, and, and fortunately we can share both of these reports and they are in the actual tickets which are linked from the accessibility page. So it should be fairly fairly visible. Um, but yes, I will put defer to 11 on this. If we can meet before that and start the work, uh, that would be great, but it doesn't have to be. Thank you. Did I spell that wrong or just a spell checker? Not. I'm sorry, Maccabee. <laughs> it's the end of the day. <laughs> 1B. It still says it's spelled wrong, but that's just, it also says my name is spelled wrong. It says all the names are spelled wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, 1706, I think you filed this ticket, Chris, that printing a record doesn't print the current tab. Um, yep, this was a recent discovery. I had Susan verify it. I don't, I haven't yet taken the time to look into it. It may be a simple, it may be a very simple fix depending on what it takes. But the idea is if you switch a tab, if you go to record view, switch a tab and hit print, it'll switch you back to whatever the first tab is because that the, the hash check that's saving the user's tab um, isn't being isn't working in the print view for some reason. I think I remember what the problem is here. I think the issue is that the print takes the current URL and adds question mark print equals one on the end of it, but it doesn't account for the possibility of there being a hash there. It may be that we just need to parse the hash off, put the print equals one in the middle, and then um, put the hash back on the end. I think I even may have left a comment on that. It's all coming back to me. So a, a proper URL parser would sounds like it would be a fix for that. Exactly. Um, Going uh, to interrupt and go back just a second for uh, 1698, the functionality of the folio driver. Uh, we do have uh, support for hoping this will be implemented soon from Teresa Reidhammer. Sorry if I got that wrong, Teresa. All right. Well, then... Uh, I will at least refresh my memory on what this is about and uh, see if I have any capacity to do something with it. Uh, not, you can, I would say continue with the action items, but I want to say that on the Google Doc, the first text has appeared and it, it ominously says, bib frame, how should we prepare? <laughs> um, I think if you wanted to chime in on that, check out the Google Doc at uh, tinyurl.com slash viewfind2024 
um, and then we can bring this up maybe at the end of this section. All right, and we're almost done in any case. So we'll get through these 10.1 tickets, then we'll talk about terrifying things like bib frame. Um, so the uh, 1708 is, I think, a pretty small thing that I bet, I'm sorry, Chris, to keep doing this to you, but I bet that you can do quickly. Um, we have a, a theme called local theme example, which is an example of a local theme and is also used when you use the command line theme generator. It just makes a copy of this so that you have something to build on. And that, of course, historically was based against Bootstrap 3, um, but I recently updated it to be uh, based on Bootstrap 5. And while doing that, noticed a problem completely unrelated to the Bootstrap upgrade. It was a pre-existing problem that when we added the search reset button, uh, I don't think we looked at the local theme after that was added because the local theme has uh, a search box embedded in the center of the search home screen with a larger font. And this has the side effect of the reset button being twice the size of the search box it's supposed to live inside. Uh, hopefully easy to fix, but it looks kind of silly uh, at the moment. All right, and then we have this task to uh, add tests to the deduplication listener. And I'm going to expect uh, Ari to sign more 11s at me for this one, yes. <laughs> And finally, uh, of note, the documentation task to document somewhere the fact that you can do advanced searches through the API, but I think that's not straightforward and may even not be advisable in all situations. So I'm going to preemptively say, let's defer that till we can think about it a little more carefully. And then the last are the finishing touches, which I'm just going to take care of, of updating dependencies and translations and uh, changing the default theme. And when I say I, I should also give fair credit to Susan Turkel, who has been doing huge amounts of work on all of these things. So thank you again for that, Susan. I'm going to save all these notes. And then, uh, yeah, let's talk about BibFrame. Um, I think... We've long been sort of avoiding dealing with it because it hasn't seemed to be moving, but I think it's becoming a lot more real with the Library of Congress migrating to Folio and switching to BibFrame first workflows. Like it's at the point where BibFrame has to work for at least some institutions, it's a real thing. So what is the implication for ViewFind? And I don't know, the total answer of this. I mean, obviously one short-term answer is that you can crosswalk bib frame to mark and then you can index mark and that's going to work for some period of time. So in that sense, I don't think there's a bib frame emergency, but obviously it's better to treat that as a first class metadata format instead of doing crosswalking, which is a compromise at best. Um, but in order for that to work, we would need some kind of tooling for ingesting linked data. And we would also need to think about what is the graph that we are coalescing to index into ViewFind, uh, assuming we don't completely abandon the record-based paradigm that is you know, the center of ViewFind's current workflows. And while I'm not going to stand in the way of a paradigm shift, I think that's a whole separate conversation and a whole separate search backend if, if that's the direction we wanted to go. Um, I think also that the answer is going to be driven by need uh, and we probably need a viewfind using institution that's seriously thinking about more heavily using BibFrame to make this happen. Uh, it's hard to do it on a purely theoretical basis because then we will probably do it wrong and we won't find out until somebody has a use case and tries to use it. Um, I do recall, and maybe somebody in this room recalls better than I do, that quite a few years ago, there was a solar indexer built, I think it was a Java-based tool that would index linked data to solar. And it was sort of like the linked data version of SolarMark. Um, 
I wish I could remember the name of it. I sort of kept an eye on it for a while and then it disappeared and I don't think it's been replaced. Um, but if anyone remembers what that was or if it's not as disappeared as I think it is, uh, I'd love to be corrected. I see shrugs. Um, so those are my initial thoughts. I'd, I'd love to uh, hear something more tangible uh, if if anyone is opinionated on this. Though uh, I think the, the other side of this, again, ties back to the, the theme I keep coming up with. Oh, I, we, we have a hand up. I think the mic's not happy. <laughs> now it's green. It was the mute switch. Uh, so I'm going to look into the flames. Uh, we are in a situation where I suppose the first library that uh, uses BIP frame or of sorts, perhaps not quite like uh, everyone else or someone else. But anyway, so their data is now in the in our production index, uh, but in MARC format. So the crosswalk is doing the job, but it's not enough and uh, it's not what they want of course, because they have something more. And uh, we need to come up with something to do things better, but nobody knows how. So if anyone else here is considering working with BIP frame in the near future, I'd be happy to collaborate on this and uh, share thoughts. And of course, uh, we can start with something as simple like uh, trying to compose records that we can actually index index in a meaningful way and display to the user. But that doesn't get us very far, far from the mark records. So I don't know, but that may be the first step. So we can say that we are doing it natively, but it requires a lot of work and it requires uh, quite a bit more from the indexer than it does with mark records or anything else that's uh, fairly self-sufficient. So we need a lot of uh, dereferencing of, of the linked data and uh, whatnot. So yeah. pro we probably need to work on that, but uh, we certainly don't want to do it uh, alone in a way that uh, only works for us. And uh, we also don't want anyone else to do it alone so that it doesn't work for us. So let's do it together. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the first question is what technology would this indexer even use? Like I could envision something horrible, like you create RDF XML and then use XSLT on it, but I don't really like that thought at all. Yeah, I, I see cringing. Um, but yeah, the problem with linked data is it gets so incredibly verbose and, uh, you know, do we need to map Sparkle queries to fields or yeah, how do we even do it? And, and as you say, the dereferencing problem and the associated need for caching adds additional challenges and questions. Um, it, it may be that we need to build a, a fairly domain specific proof of concept just to learn what the problems are before we even attempt to generalize it more. Um, but we've been um, way back indexing RDF data in Elasticsearch and using JSON LD as an inter as the actual format might be the way to go because you can sort of build semi-structured data out of that. And I would suggest to look into that instead of XML. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a good point. We actually have some JSON LE support in the record manager already because we we use some ontologies that uh, come in as JSON LD or are converted to JSON LD and it's uh, it's quite okay to work with. And uh, I wouldn't want to go with the XML either. So, <laughs> so it wasn't a that's, serious that's suggestion. One way, but uh, this means that we have some some framework for or, or a little bit of uh, kind of groundwork done for handling bib frame as well. But it seems that uh, we need to do a lot of caching, a lot more than we currently do, or a lot more of uh, sources that uh, we currently do. And uh, well, I don't know what else, <laughs> because <laughs> I haven't really dug into bib frame yet. But uh, uh, I suppose, uh, it will come up in both on both sides, in the indexing side and also in the in the user interface side. So, so the first step, of course, is to get the data into the index and uh, being able to display it. But uh, I suppose that sooner or later we need need we need to be able to handle more advanced stuff in the in the user interface as well. When I, I think a, a parallel project that's worth thinking about is how to store and leverage URIs in Solar so that we you know, are indexing the dereferenced data, but we're also making more use of identifiers. And you know, we have a lot of URIs in Mark today. That's a growing thing. How can we be leveraging that? And you know, the Solar specific challenges of you don't have nested or structured data, so how do you line up the pieces in a way that's comprehensible? Um, yeah, that's true. In many cases, for many searches, I think we don't need the structure in a, a sort of a nested structure. In some cases it would be useful, but we can uh, at least do something with uh, with the normal normal sol solar index as it is. But I wonder if we should actually define some new fields so that we have a standard space uh, to work with together because we are now storing uh, uh, URIs in, uh, in uh, dynamic fields. So if everyone else does, does something with other fields or the same field name, but using it differently, we are in trouble. <laughs> Another thought is that we may need some new record driver methods or some new parameters on existing ones to get enriched data with URIs, because it occurs to me that at least for mark-based records, we don't even need to store that in the index to get it out in the record driver. So that might be a conservative starting point. You know, What can we do with the URIs? How can we extract them? And then that could move down a layer into solar in the future once we've worked the the basic shape of it out. That's true. And I think uh, we have a lot of methods in the record drivers that uh, return a string or an array of strings. And we should move from move away from that to be able to extend them. So that's one step at least. In fact, maybe this is a uh string with URI class that could be returned in place of a string that automatically turns itself into a string but has a get URI method on it. And then that could be fairly seamlessly uh, incorporated into the existing methods. True. Or URI and perhaps other attributes as well. Right, right. Enriched string. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to test everybody's patience uh, by going through all of the current 11.0 uh, pull requests and JIRA tickets because I think I've already pushed my luck making you listen to me talk about all the 10.1 stuff. Um, but it is all here listed in this wiki page, which is linked at the top of the uh, document that uh, was shared with you. So if you want to look through it and see if there are things here that either you feel in a position to contribute to or that you think are particularly high priorities, um, you know, there are spaces in the document to make note of that. 
and we will certainly take that feedback into consideration as we prioritize the work. Or as I say, there's the ongoing community calls where you will be free to come and advocate for the issues that are important to you. Um, otherwise, you know, the reality of viewfind prioritization is if it's easy to merge straightforward and doesn't seem likely to cause problems for other people, it will get merged. And otherwise it will be a conversation until it reaches a point where it's safe to merge. Um, and let's see, how are we doing? Oh, and that's time. That's perfect. It's 5.30. <laughs> so thank you all um, for not walking out of the room <laughs> and, uh, and for this whole conference. It's, it's been wonderful. And, uh, you know, as I say, please keep in touch. I'm always happy to talk to anyone about Viewfind at any time. I, I mean that very sincerely. I've enjoyed talking to everyone here. Anyone I didn't get to talk to, I'm sorry I missed you, uh, but don't be afraid to reach out. I'm always around.